Hi and welcome to tutorial 75 in the series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our Markplex email list then please go to markplex.com and uh, I'll let you know when I create new tutorials or programs and uh, also consider Gold Pass membership if you'd like a more structured uh, way of learning Easy Language and uh, you can also find details about that at markplex.com. So anyway, uh, somebody on the uh, Gold Pass membership list emailed me and said, could I do a tutorial which took what we did in tutorial 60 and added something to look for divergence as well? So first of all, to recap, in tutorial 60, what we were doing is creating a uh, CCI indicator and then looking for CCI trend line breaks. So for example, you can see here we're, we're joining the top of this little peak to the next little top peak, and then we're seeing a cross. And uh, when we see the cross, what we do is we thicken the line, and we also draw on the CCI chart, this little X. And you can see full details about how we created this program and how we applied it to the chart in this way if you go to tutorial 60 at markplex.com but what I want to do now is just create a very simple um, divergence and add it to this program and show you how you could do that now what I'm going to use is the divergence type indicator we created in tutorial 4 in other words I'm going to look at the uh, two pivots on the CCI and then I'm just going to com compare price the uh, that is occurring at the same time as those pivots now of course that might not represent price pivots. I just want to keep this simple and then uh, if you want to get more complicated you can do that. But um, let's just go to the program. And What I've done in a program called 75A is created a copy of the Tutorial 60 program. And uh, if we go down a little bit in the program you'll see that one of the first things that we do is we look for pivots, top pivots and bottom CCI pivots. Say so condition one, that's looking for a pivot that has just been confirmed. And um, condition two is saying, yes, we, we need to have condition one, but also we need a pivot before that. Um, if you look at the pivot function, if you're not familiar with it, you can just right click pivot here and see how that works. But two represents not the most recent, but the second most recent pivot. So we're saying there has been a recent pivot just confirmed confirmed there has been a second most recent pivot and then finally we're saying that the um, second most recent pivot is actually greater than the most recent pivot CCI so what we can do is also look for a divergence or we can look for a divergence in price at the same time and the way that we do that is we would say if condition 2 has occurred in other words we've got these uh, these two CCI pivots and H high of price that occurred at the most recent pivot which is O piv bar 1 is greater than the high that occurred at O piv bar 2 now as I say that those may not necessarily be price pivots but we're just trying to keep this uh, simple that should be a square bracket there so if we have the the two CCI's and we have those CCI's the second one is less than the first um, rather the um, most recent one is less than the one before that but price the most recent price is greater than the uh, the high price before that so what we're going to do if that occurs I'm just going to start a little begin end statement and uh, just to show you what's happening here, we're just going to start by putting in a little um, text statement just when this occurs so we can see that it has occurred. And what I like to do is uh, when creating a program, it's always good to test it as you go along because uh, it's a lot more difficult if you do absolutely everything in your program and then you test it. Then you have to sort of go back and look at everything, all the component parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this at the date of the most recent um, CCI pivot which is OPIV bar 1 and also the time it's OPIV bar 1 and then we want to put it we're going to draw it on the, um, the CCI chart so we want to put it at OPIV CCI 1 and then I'm just going to put in some text I'm just going to call it bear div like so 
close the bracket semicolon and I'm just gonna press F3 okay we seem to have an error so let's just check what that is okay what I've done here I should have just put a uh, put a, a zero and I should have put a O so okay so we're good so let's go and look at the chart and let's see what we're seeing you can see now in this for example if we were to just zoom in here you can see that we made a lower high on the CCI but the equivalent prices the uh, the price at the lower high is actually greater than the previous CCI pivot so I've put on the chart bear div bear div bear div now we can do something similar for for bullish divergence so what I'm going to do is just uh, copy that in the chart just to save some typing Okay, so I've copied that in and you can see here instead of condition two, it's condition four. And uh, we're now looking for the uh, the low at, and that should be O piv bar three. So this should be O piv bar three and O piv bar four. In other words, the most recent low is less than the uh, the one before that. And uh, then we wanna draw that at the O piv bar three O pip bar three and O C C I three like so. So I think that's good. And uh, let's just press F3 and check. Okay, no errors. And if we go to the chart, we should now see that uh, we're getting some, what we're saying, bullish divergence here as well. Now, of course, the uh, divergence might uh, not occur on the same bar as the, uh, the crossing. And uh, so what we need to think about is, well, Perhaps what we want to do is just wait for a certain number of bars after a divergence has occurred. And if the crossing occurs within so many bars of the uh, divergence first occurring, then we'll flag that somehow in the program. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a bear counter, which we're going to increment every bar. I'm just going to call it bear counter equals bear counter plus one. And uh, when we get a new potential bearish divergence what we're going to do is set the bear counter to zero and uh, we're going to do something similar for the uh, for the potentially bullish divergence so we're going to say bull counter equals bull counter plus one so that increments every bar and then when we get a potential bullish divergence we're going to say bull counter equals zero and uh, what we need to do is declare those variables. So we do that up in the variable part of the program. And uh, just gonna put a comma there and uh, create bull counter and bear counter. And while we're here, I'm just gonna create a new input called max counter. Actually, let's make that uh, say 10 to start with. Okay, so what we're going to do is every time we get to a new bar, those things increment. And uh, when we get a new potential divergence, they're reset to zero. Now, bear in mind that that divergence will occur a certain number of bars after the pivot, because obviously we need a right strength. So having done that, we can now just go and uh, go find the part of the program that draws a little X on the chart and also thickens the line. And if you just go down to the bottom of the chart you'll see that we've got two places where that happens one of them for uh, the green lines one of them for the red lines and what we can do is add an extra condition so for the green lines which um, potentially could indicate a bullish situation we're going to say if bull counter is less than max counter then begin and uh, we need to put an end the end here as well and uh, we can do a similar thing for the for the red lines, the bearish lines. In fact, let's just look at the chart. Just see, actually, the um, the green lines are going to be, yeah, the green lines the bullish, the the red lines the bearish. So this is going to be if bear counter is less than five, or rather is less than max counter, then begin. In other words, we're only going to thicken those lines. We're only going to draw the cross now if it happens within a certain number of bars of the uh, the, uh, the bear or bull counter, respectively. So I'm going to verify that. Looks like we've got some sort of error here. So let's just check what that is. So we need a semicolon. And uh, 
Okay, so the error message is saying that this is occurring on line 68. So let's go to line 68 and uh, see what's going on. And uh, there we go, we, we haven't put a semicolon after the bull counter is equal to zero. So that should be okay now. Press F3 and uh, go to the chart. Now we may not necessarily notice too much difference, but um, if we were to reduce that max counter, we would start to see less of these lines. So for example, if we were to change the max counter to be equal to zero, then uh, we should see those thicker lines and the X's disappearing completely. We're just going to see the thin lines. So anyway, uh, hopefully this technique uh, could be useful to you. Obviously, as I said right at the beginning, this is a very simple sort of way of determining divergence because the price pivots don't necessarily occur at the same place as the CCI pivots. But I think it uh, demonstrates a uh, simple principle and hopefully it will be useful to you. Thank you.